We are at Coastal Care Veterinary in Halifax, and since they opened at the beginning of this year, they became the first in Nova Scotia to bring in a CT scan for pets, as well as several specialists. I'm joined by practice manager Holly McNeil and Dr. Jeremy Orr. So this is a big investment right here. Uh, what kind of need was there for it? It was definitely something that was overdue for the province. Um, having it close by definitely helps the, the clients, but also patients, be, it be more accessible for them. Uh, it's been quite popular and well utilized in multiple specialties that we've had. Um, so it has been something that, you know, we've definitely already seen the benefits from. So Before this came here, what would uh, pet owners do? The closest CT before us was uh, going to the ABC at, uh, in PEI. Mm -hmm. How much does something like this cost? It's quite a substantial um, financial undertaking. That's it's why it took so long to do. You know, you're thought, talking about construction as well as the actual uh, diagnostic itself. So, you know, you're kind of upwards about a, about a million. Mm -hmm. so and also the specialties that have come in. Uh, your specialty is cardiology. Who else has joined your team? Yeah, that's a great question. So right now in our hospital, we have board certified dermatologists and we also have veterinarians that have advanced training in internal medicine, anesthesia, surgery. Uh, next month, we have a doctor that specializes in eye disease, so an ophthalmologist, um, as well as a veterinarian who specializes in critical care. So those really sick patients that will be in our ICU for treatment. And we're hoping uh, before the end of the year, next year, we'll have our neurologist on board, which will be the first veterinary neurologist for Atlantic Canada, which is huge for this area. We've heard lots about the shortage of veterinarians and, and you know, people having trouble getting help for their pets. How are you able to staff this? So it hasn't come without its challenges, for sure. You know, and we're, we're not immune to that. Um, there is a draw being able to have the opportunity to work alongside specialists. So that has been, you know, something that has helped sparked interest from you know the support staff and, and ER doctors and things like that. But we're not immune to you know the struggles. So it. We are, you know, always open to people looking for opportunity. However, you know, we've been fortunate to have a, a good amount to start with. Currently, we have 81 team members. Uh, with all the upcoming specialties, we're probably going to be approaching about 100 um, within, the, within the hospital in general. So. <laughs> And you've been working with students at UPEI? Yes, so just since we opened in January, I've had probably about half a dozen students come and do a cardiology rotation with me. So it's an opportunity for them to get a little bit more training specifically about cardiac disease in pets, which is great. And we're continuing to work on a relationship with them. So we'll hopefully be able to host more students in the future and some of the specialties that we'll have here that unfortunately aren't even at the vet school in PEI, which is a really exciting partnership for us. And, and I understand an MRI is also in your future. Um, what more can that do? Uh, just a higher level of uh, diagnostics, especially we were waiting to kind of develop that aspect of the hospital until we had signed a neurologist because in, if you're going to invest in that type of instrumentation, you really need somebody to, to utilize it. Um, so now that we have signed neurology to start with us at the end of the year, we can, you know, start developing on that aspect. Um, more accessible, uh, you know, neurology services. Uh, we're going to also be able to have less of a travel time um, with regards to seeking surgical care for particular issues um, and earlier diagnostic or earlier diagnosis on particular diseases. So. Of course, lots of talk about the stress on veterinarians uh, over the past few years, especially. How do you balance that work and still, you know, being happy in your job? Yeah, it's a great question. Ever since COVID, uh, pet ownership has exploded. And so there's been a big demand on our industry. We've had a lot of vets retire and they haven't necessarily been replaced. So we've definitely been struggling with the workforce shortage over the last few years. So certainly they're increasing the number of Nova Scotia seats at the college and PEI. So that'll help with some of the demand. But where we do deal with such 
such a, a stressful job with dealing with sick pets and helping their owners through that, we have to find that right work-life balance. And so even with a hospital like this in our area, we can support local practices with those complicated cases where they can refer them to us. So it takes away some of the stress on their plate. But it is a constant challenge for us to try to find that right balance because obviously we want to help animals, we want to be here and work, but we also have to try to find the time for us to kind of decompress a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself, yeah. exactly. All right, well, thank you both very much for your time. Thank we you. appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much.